Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. How you doing, John? Good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Today is our special day with Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach. Mm. And um, we just our, love we just love Michelle. We love and I'm today I'm interested in the relationship part. Michelle, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Oh, Great good to, be to here. see you again. Thanks. You too. You, you know, this is uh, we're in the midst of the holiday season. Of course, holiday season every year runs from what? Uh, Halloween to uh, the middle of January or something. Right. So there's a lot of stress, uh, not just parties and stuff, but couples and relationship is under a lot of stress uh, during this whole holiday season. And I think it gets worse with the COVID-19. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, it, it obviously is, is, it takes a lot of, it takes a toll on uh, a couple to be together often 24 seven and with fears and anxieties around health and finances and the economy and the election. I mean, there are a lot, there are a lot of things going on. It can be a stressful. Yeah, it seems that one of the really big stressful things is, uh, are we gonna have virtual holidays? Uh, let's say Thanksgiving. Um, as people have uh, for Easter and Passover, uh, I know a lot of people did virtual holidays, or do we feel comfortable enough or desperate enough to have the grandchildren around <laughs> and what have you? So uh, that's causing, and for me, of course, the big one, and I'm sure it is for everybody, is where do you put the pole, the Festivus, and you have to wash your hands <laughs> in between each uh, use of it. But anyway. Festivus pole, I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> So in any event, uh, how, how's, how's it best to deal with this? Because you have all the competing people wanting to get together uh, and really can't. That's, I mean, that's one of the key things. Well, it, 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 Michelle, isn't it really the stress between the couple, the two people? I mean, you're, you're stuck together and more than you ever would. Whatever all these other stresses are that are holiday related and annual, now you're stuck together uh, much, much more than you probably ever were before. And you're dealing with these, uh, uh, what, a new layer of stress created by the uh, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, there's always stress, right? There are always uh, shifts and changes happening. But I, I think now it's, it's particularly acute for a lot of people. And so, um, yeah, I'd lo love to share more about how to respond to that and how to um support oneself and as a couple through this well don't let us stop you yeah <laughs> okay okay Good. yeah so i mean the first thing really comes down to self-care right and um you know a lot of us have heard that term before but it's really not an option to skip it anymore i think because it really makes a difference on how well we can respond to life and respond to challenges so you know, basically questions to ask oneself, like how can I build my own resilience? And how can I be kinder to myself? What support do I need? What activities are nourishing and uh, stress relieving to me? And um, all these things really matter at a, at a time like, I mean, they always kind of matter because life throws us curveballs, right? But, but they matter now in particular. And so I think it's really important to look at how our, you know, sleep and exercise and, you know, what kind of maybe mindfulness practice, what kind of spiritual practice you might have or you might need to develop at this time. And um, sometimes we're doing things that kind of cope, like maybe too much alcohol or too much TV or something. And even though those might feel good to numb out, they don't necessarily really nourish us in a, in a very significant or sustaining way. Yeah, you, you make a really good point because... Um, you, if in order to uphold your end of the relationship, you really need to be at your best. You, your partner deserves to have you uh, at your best. And so we often forget that we think, well, we can, you know, we can wallow in our, you know, depression or whatever it is, or, and we don't realize that we owe our partner uh, a, a little bit more than that. We can't just indulge ourselves. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I think we also owe ourselves that too, because we're going to be able to, you know, surf life better if we have some things that we do regularly, some practices that nourish us. And I think it's also important as a couple to look at what can we do together? Because we're on the same team here. We're in this together. And, 
you know, for better, for worse, you know, a lot of people would love to be in a, in a partnership around this time. So to kind of like, you know, who's this person with me and how can I make this better? And so that's some of the things I also want to keep talking about here is, is what can we do as a couple to um, maybe it's take a walk in the morning together, or maybe it's, um, you know, have our separate activities that we do and then we come back and things like that. So it's really important to be looking at this as a couple and to be a team on this. Good point. Yeah. I, I yeah. And, say, and the, oh, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to talk about, um, there's a way that I really think, and John, you really touched on this, but like, we really need to take responsibility for our own emotional state and our own reactivity and um, to see if we can respond to the other person. Because, you know, when we are more resourced, when we're taking the time for self-care, we are able to respond better rather than react. And when we react often, I know for myself, like when I was married, for example, I'm no longer married um, to that to that person, but I was very reactive and I just sort of like let it all, you know, fly. And you know what? Not OK. It's it's not OK. I mean, like, I can't help it. I got really upset. It's like, well, it happens and we need to forgive ourselves. But what can we do to notice? Wow. You know, I'm really sorry about my tone of voice just now. You know, let me say that again. I'm feeling really stressed. Let me take a break. I need to. I need to take some time to myself. Let me come back and talk about this further with you. So just regularly notice how we are with our partner and how, you know, we want to do better. Right. So uh, beyond, beyond that, um, uh, getting rid of the stress, you maybe get rid of your own stress. Uh, how can you approach your partner who, who's probably as stressed as you are uh, or more so uh, uh, besides having them both come to see you? Uh, so that you can uh, uh, peel them off the wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, um, there are many ways as a couple to do this. I think something, you know, bring in the playfulness, bring in the humor um, whenever whenever you can, really. It's like stay connected to that, whatever that uh, elephant or impish part. We all, the playful little kids that we have, that we are inside, right? Uh, stay in touch with that the best you can. Um, the other thing is to ask for support from your partner and, and ask for what that means. Like, you know, I'm really upset about this. Can I talk about with you right now? I just, you don't need to solve it. I just, I just need to unload this thing that happened to me and I'm really upset about it. And, and to, you know, best you can be available for your partner for that. And if you're not able to be available, say that, you know what? I can't right now. I really want to hear what's going on for you, but I, I got something going on that's really upsetting me. Let's circle back a little later on today or tomorrow or, you know, so you kind of are, you know, honest and respectful and transparent about your ability to be a resource for your partner or not, right? Mm. All good advice. All great ways to approach the, the lockdown. Although, you know, mm. as the pandemic goes on, um, it's changing everywhere. Uh, states are opening up, then they're locking down and they're opening up and certain industries are uh, locked down and then they open up. So we're going to be going through this in various stages, I think. Um, and that's real good advice because we're going to have to put up with um, this kind of uh, pandemic, um, the solutions, you know, we don't as have we, a- Right. As also as we get used to the new normal of Zoom gatherings, uh, which is for a lot of people, uh, it's actually opened up doors, I've found, of getting together with people who live so distant that you rarely get to see them. So uh, I think that uh, over a period of time, even after the pandemic is over, uh, that there'll be people who will be joining us at various holidays who generally never did before. You know, other than you pick up the phone and pass the phone around uh, to the kid <laughs> who's uh, who lives in a distant uh, city. Well, now yeah. they can just join you on Zoom. So in a lot of ways, um, uh, there's a plus side to all of this. Uh, also, there's a lot less cleanup to do, you know. Right, right, right. Leave me, yeah, leave reading and you're done. <laughs> yeah. And so I want to share some other things. So I really want to invite people to celebrate the good, like celebrate the good things that are happening. What is going well? You know, maybe, you know, you're fortunate enough that financially you're not concerned. Well, wow, that's something to celebrate that I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Or you're both healthy right now. And you know, that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Or, you know, you, like you said, you get to connect with your children, even if it's from afar over zoom or something like that. So 
kind of a, you know, people talk about a daily gratitude habit or something, but what can you do to remember some of the good things? Um, taking time to long hugs together or cuddling with each other. I mean, we think about how we let our pets lay on our lap and, and you know, you pet your, you pet your pet, right? Well, take turns being a pet for a while and just let somebody else just, you know, show you some love, you know, whatever that is for you. I know I've talked about this on another um, uh, segment about the, the five love languages, but, you know, make sure you know your partner's main love languages and you know yours and speak to them in that language, right? Mm. Well, you know, I have to, I, I have to thank you uh, because uh, when we started out, I was a little bit concerned about the Festivus Bowl. And I'm just, I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to wear a mask. I'm going to wear a mask. And I'm going to wash my hands when I'm done. And I'm going to have uh, hand sanitizer available for everybody so that they can enjoy the poll as much as I have. And they can uh, then let somebody else have uh, fun with it. So uh, this has been a wonderful session. Uh, I'm, now I'm afraid to get my bill. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the last thing, oh, oh, I have one more oh, thing, if that's okay. Yeah. yeah, so the last thing really comes down to a little bit of problem solving. So basically, there are probably some points in your day that are friction points for you as a couple, you know, tension points, things happen as, you know, maybe after the work day or first thing in the morning or whatever it might be. And to take a look at those, not to blame each other, but just to notice, wow, you know, when I'm working and in the living room and then you come and ask me a question, it's very disruptive to me and I can't respond right away, but I'm irritated by the questioning. Can we have something around like these are my work hours? You know, I'm you know this is an example, right? But like ways that you can kind of um, uh, have some kind of arrangement about the way, the timing that you do things, or whatever it is, those irritating things that how can we problem solve yeah. together so that those are less of an issue? How can we get smoother around those kinds of edges with each other? And there's always ways to kind of you know small tw small tweaks can make big differences. Good point. Good point. Well, thank you, Michelle. This has been uh, this has been very helpful, and I know because of your advice, we're all going to enjoy the holidays more. I can't say that we're going to enjoy being locked down in, in the pandemic, but it is going to make it a lot easier. So, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, for, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for relieving my stress. I'm so so airy. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.